Harriet Tubman once said, I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person now I was free. There was such a glory over everything, I felt like I was in heaven. The Underground Railroad was a network of secret routes and safe houses established in the United States during the early to mid-1800s and used by African-American slaves to escape into free states in Canada. One African-American in particular, Harriet Tubman. Harriet not only traveled the Underground Railroad, but she was a conductor, the best conductor. I was the conductor on the Underground Railroad for eight years, and I can say what most conductors can't say. I never ran my train off the tracks, and I never lost a passenger, said Harriet. She was not a silent woman when it came to slavery, and she spoke out about her opinions about slavery and later about women's equality. Her life and impact on history is very notable and still studied by students today. Harriet Tubman was an important figure in the abolition movement due to her success as a conductor on the Underground Railroad, her fight against slavery, and her work for women's equality. Harriet Tubman was born around 1820 in Dorchester County, Maryland. The name given to her at birth was actually Araminta Harriet Ross, but she decided to go by Harriet because it was her mother's name. Harriet was born a slave and she was put to work as young as three years old, delivering messages. By six years old, she was sold to a farm to do more labor-intensive tasks, and she was whipped often by her owner because she couldn't fulfill her responsibilities. Throughout her life, Harriet turned to religion during tough times. She once said, I prayed all the time about my work everywhere. I was always talking to the Lord. In 1835, Harriet went through a traumatic, life-changing experience. Harriet was in a store when another field slave came in suddenly while trying to escape an overseeker. Once the overseer threw a heavy lead weight to try to stop him, which ended up hitting Tubman in the forehead. It knocked her unconscious for days and left her with a permanent scar. Due to the tragedy, she would have unexpected painful headaches and visions and sleep spells. In 1844, Harriet married John Tubman. However, she was still a slave even though she was married to a free man. She then received a bit more freedom in her everyday life. Due to the sneak peek of freedom that she felt she now had, she knew that she couldn't remain a slave for the rest of her life. She decided she would escape slavery in October of 1849. This would be only the beginning for Harriet and the challenges she would face, as well as the impact she would make. As time went along, Harriet acquired the name Moses, because like Moses in the Bible, who led the Jews out of Egypt, Harriet would lead her people out of slavery, and she would go on to become the most famous conductor on the Underground Railroad. Harriet was the best conductor for many reasons, one being she was strategic and smart about the way she did things. Harriet fought to free an escaped slave, Charles Knoll, after he was caught on the streets of Troy, New York. When Harriet found out she was a short distance away and knew that Knoll had been arrested, she knew she had to do something. Hundreds of anti-slavery supporters protested outside where Knoll was being held. Harriet then disguised herself as an old woman and slipped into the back of the room. When Noel was being moved, she signaled to the crowd to make as many distractions as possible, and she grabbed Charles. The sheriff and deputies beat both Harriet and Noel. Harriet screamed for the crowd to move Noel to the river, although once they got to the ferry boat, West Troy police were already waiting for them for when they would get off. Harriet then grabbed Noel with bullets coming back at her head, and somehow Noel had escaped successfully. Harriet's clothing were ripped, she was bruised and bloody, but she had won the battle and became a true general. During this time, a law was passed known as the Fugitive Slave Act. This law said that slave catchers had the power to force local authorities like police and judges to help slave masters capture their human property. Additionally, it would say that anyone who was caught helping runaway slaves would be fined or sent to jail and anyone who was suspected to be a runaway could be arrested and turned over to slave catchers. Harriet needed a way to work around this new law, so in response she rerouted and led her passengers even further north towards Canada. Tubman made 19 trips to the south, saving about 300 people from slavery. There were once rewards as high as $40,000 if a person captured Harriet. In total, she would lead 300 people to freedom via the Underground Railroad. Harriet spoke out about both the abolition of slavery and women's rights. After years had passed and Harriet grew older, she continued to share her story. Harriet was friends with women's suffrage movement leaders Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. 
The objective of the New England Women's Suffrage Association was to amend the Constitution to include women's rights to vote. Harriet had spent years trying to gain her freedom and the freedom of others. While she wasn't a leader of this program, she was a very strong supporter. During the 1880s and 1890s, Harriet spoke at women's suffrage meetings in New York, Boston, and Washington about her experience as a female slave. In 1870, African American men were allowed to vote, but not women, white or black. By 1920, the 19th Amendment was added to the Constitution, which gave women the right to vote. The women of the New England Women's Suffrage Association and supporters like Harriet created a large impact. She always believed that women should have the right to vote, and so she joined the fight to win the vote for women, which eventually would happen. Because of the way that Harriet spoke out for women's rights, fought against authorities to free slaves whom she didn't even know, and was the absolute best Underground Railroad conductor, she will be a woman that has transformed history. Harriet Tubman left her mark on history and the lives of many people. Harriet spent the rest of her life writing her book, fundraising, traveling, and speaking out. Harriet wrote a biography with white abolitionist Sarah Bradford, who lived in Auburn. The book was called The Life of Harriet Tubman, and it told the stories of her heroism. However, the book was somewhat incomplete and only told half of Harriet's life. In October 1827, Harriet learned the news that John Tubman had been murdered in Maryland. Harriet then married Nelson Davis, who then died on October 18, 1888, most likely because of tuberculosis. Harriet wanted to raise money for the poor and less fortunate. She became an active member in the AME Zion Church in Auburn, and she raised money for needy families. Her dream was to open a home for poor and elderly African Americans, and in 1896, she bid on the property to do so. Finally, in 1908, Harriet Tubman opened the home for the aged and infirm Negroes. The residents were charged a small free of $150 to live there. Harriet Tubman died of pneumonia on March 10, 1913, and she is buried next to her brother in Fort Hill Cemetery in Auburn with military honors. On June 14, 1914, a large bronze plaque was placed at the Cayuga County Courthouse that read, called the Moses of her people during the Civil War with rare courage, she led over 300 Negroes up from slavery to freedom and rendered invaluable services as a spy and a nurse. Harriet's life is so remarkable that there was recently a movie made to highlight her life and her accomplishments. It is called Harriet, and here's a little bit of the trailer. 